Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening for MPCBAC's Q&A session focused on the environment. Uh, my name is Shauna Santrosa and I am a member of Team CBAC here in the writing office in Orangeville. This evening, I will be asking Kyle a series of questions that were pre-submitted by constituents both on Facebook and via email. We did receive an overwhelming number of questions submitted, so we will do our best to get through as many as possible. But since we did have so many, if your question uh, was not able to get answered in this session, please feel free to email Kyle at kyle.cback at parl.gc.ca to follow up after the session. I'll now pass it over to Kyle for some brief introductions before we begin. I just want to, you know, thank everyone for the questions. They were really interesting. And as Shauna said, there's lots of them. So we're really going to do our best tonight to answer uh, as many as we can. And we will, of course, answer every question uh, if you send us an email afterwards. Earth Day is uh, an important time for us to think about our environment and to think about what we can do and the steps we can take to improve our environment. It's something that's very important to me. And I know it's something that's actually very important to the Conservative Party. And so that's why I'm hosting this tonight, because I want everyone to have that chance to talk about the environment with me. That's great. Thanks, Kyle. All right, so we will begin. We did receive quite a few questions with regards to the proposed air and wastewater treatment plant and where the issue stands at this time. So Kyle, for those of us who aren't familiar with the issue, could you please give us some background on what you have done to support local environmentalists and as well, where you might see the federal government's role in having this project revisited at this time? That's a great question. So what's happening right now is the town of Erin is proposing to build a wastewater and a treatment facility, and it's going to um, take and pump that treated sewage uh, into the West Credit River. And the issue that's been raised by um, Bell Fountain residents, people around Bell Fountain environmentalists, is that this could have really adverse effects on native fish populations, in particular brook trout which is a cold water fish, they breed in the river, and the, the temperature of the effluent that's going to be discharged in the river could really affect their ability to reproduce. Among other things, there's actually some endangered fish that are also uh, in the river that are in need of protection. So what has happened is they've asked for a federal environmental impact assessment to determine whether or not this uh, treated uh, sewage that goes into the river is going to have an effect on the fish. So a petition was put together uh, to get that uh, presented in Parliament. And uh, I joined the call for people to sign the petition so that I could present that in Parliament and call upon the government to initiate a federal uh, impact environmental assessment. Where it is right now is that the request has been made, the government has received the petition, and we're waiting for the response, which of course uh, we hope will be a positive response and uh, lead to some changes with respect to the plant. That's great. Thanks, Kyle, and thank you for your work on that. Um, the next, next recurring theme we, we found in the questions was with regards to the 413. Uh, you've been asked specifically, what do you think about the proposed superhighway 413 from Milton to Vaughan and its impact on farmland and the greenbelt? And if you're opposed or in favor of it and to explain why. And then in keeping with that theme, what is your action plan on maintaining the green spaces that Dufferin Caledon already has from going towards development? It's a lot there, but. Uh... That's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of questions there. So this is a, this is a tricky one. Um, there was an environmental assessment that was done provincially and the former provincial government decided to not proceed with the highway. They're now going through another environmental assessment to see whether or not uh, this would have significant impacts on the environment. In general, uh, I'm not in favor of new highways because I think that what we should be doing is investing in mass transit. That's the way that we should be doing it to reduce our carbon uh, footprint, uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and just make commuting better for you know, all people and all residents. With respect to protecting the environment, I think we have to protect our green spaces in the green belt. And one of the challenges I see with Highway 413 is that it's actually going to go through the green belt. Now I know there's gonna be lots of growth in Caledon 
And I know there's issues of how are we going to move people and things with all this new growth that's coming in. So I do want to see the proposal, see the environmental uh, assessment before I decide one way or another what my position is going to be. And I think that's what we should do. We should look at all of the evidence before we make a decision. I personally think that government should be looking to invest in transit over highways because I think it's just a much more environmentally uh, responsible way to move people and things. Um, but right now I'm going to wait and see uh, where all of this comes and where it all leads to. Great, thanks Kyle. Uh, so moving on, Brian would like to know, does the PC party and yourself support the expansion of coal mining in the eastern side of the Rockies? So I, I don't know what the party position is going to be on this, but I do know that I am not in favor of expanding coal mining. One of the things we've learned as we look to try and address climate change is the elimination of coal fired electricity plants uh, and in general the use of coal because it's very greenhouse gas intensive. What we see right now and one of the big problems we have uh, in the world is the massive number of coal fired electricity plants that are being built in China and they are dramatically increasing greenhouse gas emissions. I, I don't see a bright future for coal, and so I think we should not be expanding coal mining. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so last week, the Conservative plan to combat climate change was unveiled. There are a number of questions about the personal low carbon savings account that's included in the plan. Can you please explain how this is different from the Liberals' carbon tax, especially when the Conservatives have long criticized the carbon tax? Yeah, so it's not a tax because you get all of your money back. A tax is something you pay to the government and you may or may not get some of it back. This is a levy. It's kind of like when you go to the beer store and uh, you get charged 10 cents per bottle. And if you bring back the bottle, you get your whole 10 cents back. That's not a tax. Uh, it's a levy. And so what we're doing is this, um, there is going to be a levy on burning, uh, you know, from carbon emissions from using fuel. And when you pay that levy, it's going to go into a green savings account. And when you get all of your money back, and from that, you can use it to invest in things that will save you energy, you could buy a new furnace, uh, you could upgrade windows, you could put new insulation into your house. There's going to be a whole vast number of things uh, that you can do to improve the energy efficiency of your home. Uh, you could use it to buy an electric vehicle. And the idea is that you get that money to further reduce your emissions, which is very different from the liberal carbon tax, because the liberal carbon tax, you pay it and you may get some of that money back at some point. And the good thing about this is our plan is it's it's better for people that live in rural and suburban ridings that have lots of commuting to do because you will pay more and you'll get it all back. Whereas under the liberal plan, you pay a lot and you get significantly less back. In fact, it's people in urban areas who are paying very little carbon tax that are benefiting most. This is going to be much more beneficial for people in the riding of Dufferin Calvin, for example. That's great. Thank you, Kyle. Um, so we did have several constituents raising the idea of light rail transit. Specifically, Larry commented on your Facebook post, the infrastructure fund that the feds have difficulty spending should have focus on moving people and not cars. Caledon has become more isolated with crowded roads due in large part to heavy truck traffic servicing South Caledon's warehouse district. And Caledon keeps authorizing more. Connect more communities with light rail transit. We have no stops in Caledon or Dufferin, so cars are essentially it. Not good for the environment nor efficiency. Do you believe light rail transit is an appropriate approach for Dufferin Caledon? Yeah, absolutely. I think that we have to look at ways to improve mass transit. It goes with what I was talking about, whether or not we should look at building another highway. One of the things I always talk to people about is I've gone to visit my brother in the UK and he lives in a small town about 45 minutes outside of London. And if he drives for about 10 minutes, he gets to a train station. And what, when you look at the, the map uh, around London, it's like Lo the city of London is the hub in a wheel. And all the spokes that go out from the hub 
are the train lines, the rail lines. So they have found the way to move people through rail and not automobile. And we should be doing that. We should have go train service, for example, coming to Bolton. And in fact, the long-term plan should include go train service to Orangeville. And that way you're gonna have two places where anywhere in Dufferin Callan, you'd be no more than a 20 or 25 minute drive to get to uh, a rail station so you can get to where you need to go. It's gonna be good for the environment uh, and it's gonna be good for people because getting out of cars is generally a good thing. Thank you, Kyle. Um, there was also a comment following your recent video about EcoTank here in Orangeville. Could you give us a little bit more information about that? Sure, yeah. So. EcoTank is uh, a fantastic new company that's operating in Orangeville. And what they're trying to do is eliminate those jugs of washer fluid, which we all think are recyclable because we see those hooks at gas stations that we can hook them on. Well, in fact, they aren't recyclable because they're too expensive to recycle because of the, the chemicals that are in the washer fluid. So what happens is millions and millions of these end up going into landfill. So as the video shows, they have a really ingenious way of dealing with this problem. Basically, there is a windshield wiper fluid pump that's gonna be at the gas station right beside the gas pump. And you can fill up uh, your wiper, your, uh, your windshield wiper fluid from there at a great price. And we're gonna eliminate all this plastic waste from the environment. So what I've done is help them with a petition that they've launched. And the petition is effectively calling on the government to help fund the company so they can expand and install these at every gas station across the country. Because you can imagine, I think it's something like 70 million jugs, uh, plastic jugs would be taken out of landfill. So if anyone has the chance, please go to my website and sign the petition. The more signatures we have on the petition, the better the chance the federal government is going to act. And to me, these are exactly the kinds of projects if we want to start making real changes in the environment that the government should be funding. I have written letters uh, to the government asking them to fund this uh, particular project, but let's try and add up that pressure. So please take the time and sign the petition. Thank you. So we did also receive a few questions regarding the defeat of the climate change proposal at the convention policy for the Conservatives last month. Constituents would like to know how you voted on the proposal and how the federal, how federal Conservative Party be considered serious on the environment when the party will not even acknowledge that climate change is real. Yeah, so I think uh, what some people are confused about is they think that conservative MPs voted on this and that was our decision. It wasn't. So these were delegates at a conservative convention and they decided that they were going to vote this way. Um, I think climate change is real and I voted accordingly. And I think what we've shown with our new environmental plan is that we are serious about the environment. And in fact, we are serious about climate change. There are all kinds of organizations that are saying really good things about our climate change plan, that it's real, the, the goals are realistic, it's been well measured uh, and scientifically uh, looked at, and it's going to make a difference. So to those of you who think we're not serious about protecting the environment and uh, working on climate change, it's just simply not true. That was just one thing that I think that the delegates at the Conservative Convention got wrong. Thanks, Kyle, for some clarification on that. Uh, we did also receive a comment from Aileen that read, you have been a great supporter for the constituents in Cataract and Alton, with the potential of a catastrophic damages to the headwaters and the world biosphere. There must be some federal jurisdiction to aid and protect the citizens and environment from blasting quarries and provide these citizens with a fighting chance against huge corporations with unlimited resources. This truly is a David and Goliath. A riding has contributed enough to aggregates. No more pits or quarries. Can you advise what you believe can be done by the federal government with respect to large scale pit and quarry operations? Well, I wanna thank the people that brought this question forward. I can say this, we've looked at this type of situation before in Dufferin Caled, and that was when the mega quarry was being proposed and people were really unhappy about it. And 
One of the things that was pushed for aggressively by our former member of Parliament, David Tilson, uh, and Michael Chong in the adjoining riding was to actually have a, a federal environmental assessment. So um, I'm looking at uh, these new pit operations very carefully. Uh, I always say I want to get the facts. So in general, uh, I'm not in favor of uh, having any new, uh, you know, quarrying going on in the riding because of the, you know, effects on the environment, which are not positive. So I'm looking at it. Um, once I've looked at it, I, I think I'm going to join the call for a federal environmental assessment of this because I think we have to look at ways again uh, to protect our environment. And I, I feel really, um, really badly for the residents who are going, who are looking at the prospect of having a gigantic uh, open pit quarry going on in their neighborhood. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to stand up for them on this um, and try and see what we can do about it. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, we did also receive another question from Anthony, and he asked, knowing what we know about harmful plastics in our oceans and forests, what impact do you propose this will have on the environment? What solutions can you and your party offer to mitigate this? Well, I think that's a great question. And one thing I think everyone can agree on is we want to have less plastics in our environment. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to sit on uh, the environmental committee where when they're looking at the new designation uh, of plastics as toxic and we heard from people in the plastics industry who of course uh, want to give their views on it and they made it very clear that they do not want any of their plastic products in the environment they take a different view though on declaring uh, a whole host of plastics as toxic when you think about it so many things in our lives are made of plastics that we need for example all kinds of medical equipment and other things are made of plastics. And so many plastics are very, very highly recyclable. So in my mind, what we have to do is look at ways to make sure as much of our plastics that we use and are in circulation are getting recycled. And there's models in Europe where the plastic uh, that they've imposed, that the plastic recycling is hitting 95, 97, 98%. And so what you have is almost no plastics going into the environment. You also have an industry that is still able to operate and operate in a um, circular fashion, right? Because it's produced, it's recycled, it's produced again. And I think this is the direction we need to go. We need to make sure that manufacturers are only manufacturing plastics that can be recycled mandate that recycling and also make incentives for consumers to make sure they recycle. And that's one of the big things they're doing in Europe. You get a very good um, chunk of change when you recycle your plastics. Whereas here, there's no mechanism to do that. And they actually have recycling stations all over the place where you put your plastic water bottle in, it gets ground up into pellets and it's going to be reused and you get 10 cents, 25 cents, something like that very similar to what we do at the beer store. So my view is that we have a very um, uh, large plastics industry in Canada. They do a lot of good. Uh, and the way to solve it is to actually make sure we recycle and everything as much as possible that's produced is recycled. That way we're going to eliminate the plastics from our environment and from our oceans. And that's something that uh, we all want to do. Thanks, Kyle. Shannon has asked, there is so much negativity in the news these days. What are some things that our current government is doing that you think are positive and that you would back or at least give them a nod for? Yeah, I, I've, I've said this a couple times. I love to give credit where credit's due. And uh, the government did a fantastic job on getting money out the door early in the pandemic, whether that was through uh, the wage subsidy uh, or through CERB. Canadians were scared when the pandemic first hit. They were worried about how they were going to make their mortgage payments, buy groceries, all kinds of things. And the government got their money uh, to them very quickly. So I do really want to commend the government for doing that because I know uh, the people in Dufferin Caledon were appreciative of that. In general, um, you're right. Politics is getting far more negative. And we saw just this week what I think is a really bad example of nasty politics when a Liberal MP made the horrible mistake in acting in a Zoom parliament 
of thinking his camera was off during Parliament and went to get changed from uh, uh, to go on a run. And his camera was on. Someone thought it was okay to take a picture of that um, and then leak that to the media. I think this is the terrible kind of toxic politics we have to get away from. I know that members of the Liberal Party and the NDP and the Green Party, they actually want what's best for this country and they're working hard to do it, just like we are in the Conservative Party. And I think we have to reflect on that more often these days. That's great. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, so another common theme in the questions was with regards to lockdowns and restrictions in Ontario. Um, some constituents were explaining that these measures are preventing residents of our community from actually enjoying the environment in our area and the great green spaces that Devon Caledon has to offer. Tyler commented, he would like to know where you stand on the issue and how you feel about Canadians' rights being stripped. This is, you know, look, this is a really tough question. And I also, uh, when I talk to people about this, I think that governments at all levels when they look at ways to try and combat COVID-19, they're taking in all the information they have, the advice of scientists and doctors, they look at the effects it's going to have on individuals and businesses, and they're really trying their best to find a way to deal with all of these competing interests. It'd be very easy to say, look, everyone's locked in your home, you're not allowed to leave uh, other than to get groceries. Um, that might stop the virus, but it would devastate people. They're trying to find the right balance. I'm really glad that the provincial government decided to back off on you know, closing playgrounds uh, and some of the other things they tried to, to bring forward to, to balance these things out. It's not the federal jurisdiction to decide whether or not there should be lockdowns or not. I think they're, they're doing the best job they can. It's not perfect um, and it's not fair what people are being asked to sacrifice, but COVID-19 is not fair. And I think we have to always think about the people and families who have lost loved ones because of COVID-19. And therefore, maybe some of the sacrifices, you know, these sacrifices are worth it. Um, that the, the common good is, is, is worth sacrificing some of our liberties. But again, I don't think we can go too far. And I think um, some of the changes that have recently been made, it was a good example of maybe we went, uh, the, the government went a little too far and uh, realized it and back things off. And I'm, I'm quite happy about that. Thanks for your input there. Um, I think we're approaching the end of the session here. So I'll just ask one final question before we wrap up for the evening here, Kyle, and then uh, a, a brief conclusion. Uh, so we did receive a question specifically, uh, what will you do to help drive change in the Conservative Party and bring the environment to the forefront of its platform? Well, I think fortunately, uh, we really have decided to put the environment in the forefront of our platform. We had a big announcement on this uh, just uh, uh, you know less than a week ago where we talked about our very ambitious climate plan. Uh, and this is us trying to show Canadians that we care about the environment. And it's something I'm passionate about. Uh, I've talked about some of the things I've got involved in in the riding. And I can tell you uh, when we meet as a Conservative caucus in Ottawa, the environment is something that is on the front burner for us because it's so critically important for us to pass on a good environment, uh, not only to our children, but for us to enjoy ourselves. So everyone in Dufferin Caledon can rest assured that the environment is very high uh, on my priority list and that of the Conservative Party. Thanks, Carl, and uh, I'll thank everyone uh, who had the opportunity to tune in this evening. Um, I'd like to remind you all that if there was any questions that Kyle was unable to answer, please feel free to email Kyle at kyle.seback at parl.gc.ca, or you can always call the office, the constituency office here in Orangeville, and the office number is 519-941-1832. I'll pass it back to you, Kyle, for some closing remarks before we finish up here. Great, Shauna. Yeah, I wanna echo what Shauna said. Uh, I wanna answer everyone's questions. So if we didn't get to your question, uh, or if you think of one tonight as you're watching, uh, please send, some, send a, an email into the office or call the office. And I think it's a huge part of my responsibility as your member of parliament to be accessible and to talk to you about issues, even issues we might not agree on. So. Um, if you also want to just talk to me about an issue, 
when you send your email in, say, Kyle, I'd love a chance to talk about this with you. And I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as quick as I can, because I'm your representative. I am a servant of the people. And my goal is to represent you. And that means finding out the issues that are important to you. I just want to thank everyone that's tuned in tonight. And of course, everyone that sent in questions. I want to thank you, Shauna, for hosting and look forward to seeing everyone uh, once we're able to get together in person, hopefully uh, very soon. Thanks, Kyle.